Thank you. Thank you. I think I'll uh, stand up. Moving targets are harder to hit, right? I, uh, I want to begin this presentation with an apology. Um, this is your first meeting. Uh, we normally don't do business by punching somebody in the nose <laughs> in the first meeting uh, and presenting them a brand new idea really without context, without a whole long list of alternatives. Uh, that's not how we do things, but uh, we've got uh, an opportunity on the table that needs quick action if uh, you're going to want to have anything to say about it. Um, and so I want to describe for you uh, what this idea is, and there will be no hard feelings if at the end of that you put your hands up and say, too much, too fast, uh, let's let this process run. Um, but the particular idea that is on the table is as a result of the increase in the state gas tax, which has injected lots of new revenue into several new programs, and one of them may be germane uh, to the discussion you're having today. One thing we do want to talk to you about uh, all the way through this process is the extent to which MTC's funding resources can be better integrated to not only achieve transportation outcomes, but the housing outcomes that we're all seeking. Uh, the Commission is already headed partway down this road. This would be going further down this road, and I think the further you get down this road, uh, the tougher the going is. So let me describe it to you in brief uh, and certainly welcome your questions. And we're really here today uh, to ask for your advice about moving forward. Um, we'll be presenting some version of these ideas to the commission actually next month, which is starting next week. So next slide. MTC has for several years now had a history of trying to better link our transportation investment decisions with housing. We've done it in a number of different ways, some of them more, some of them less popular with the Commission itself. Uh, the first one I'm showing you is instances where we have directly invested our transportation money in housing. Uh, it's tended to be in uh, programs that have these cute little acronyms. There's TOA, there's NOAA, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I will say that I think the Commission has been willing to engage in piloting these ideas, but at this point is probably not willing to take them to scale because for the obvious reason, we've got a lot of transportation needs in the Bay Area. And uh, if we're going to start to poke a hole in the transportation boat and move the money over to housing, then we might have done some good for housing, but we haven't done some good for transportation. So I think what we have done here, which has gotten us a bunch of leverage, as you can see, five to one, sometimes even more, uh, it's a good use of, of funds per se. Uh, but I think the concern the Commission has had is that we need to keep transportation money flowing primarily to transportation investments. That's not the end of the story, though. Next slide. I think where the Commission has had quite a bit more comfort is on the idea of conditioning transportation investments to achieve housing outcomes. Uh, the most, uh, I, I think, uh, noteworthy example is something we call OBAG, uh, which is not ABAG's Irish cousin. It's actually the One Bay Area Grant Program. And that program has within it both a carrot and a stick uh, to try to achieve better housing outcomes. The carrot is that the money is distributed around the region based upon housing production. So if you build more houses in one cycle, you're going to get more of this money in the next cycle. Um, and so it has that built-in incentive uh, to try to encourage communities uh, to go farther. But it also has a stick. And the stick is that unless you have an approved housing element from the state of California, uh, you're not eligible for these funds at all. And in fact, when we started this program, there were about 20 cities in the Bay Area that didn't. And uh, about a year after this program took effect, there were zero. Um, so I, I think that's a pretty clear case of that linkage being direct and that linkage being successful. Um, we have also started a program. Uh, we've capitalized it. We haven't actually uh, uh, begun it because it relates to a deadline in the future. And that's the second item you see on this slide, which is 80,000 units by 2020. And the basic idea there is it's a race. All the cities in the Bay Area are entered in the race. 
whoever the top 10, whoever gets to 2020 with the most, you get some of this money. That's the basic idea. Uh, and again, that, that particular program is limited to the top 10. So not everybody wins. Uh, only the, f the first 10 finishers win. So that is a place, and this is sort of the model for the conversation that I want to direct you to now, which is this new opportunity. Next slide. Uh, Jay McKenzie, I think, was referring to this, uh, and this is the production. Uh, th this is what RENA was asking us to do, the regional housing needs allocation, over the last two cycles. Cycle three, which ended in 2007, cycle four, which just ended in 2014. You can obviously see the huge dip that we had in the, in the fourth cycle had to do with the recession. Um, the interesting thing, though, is really in the bottom of the chart. Uh, the average production rate for all Bay Area cities for low, very low, and moderate income housing, based upon their arena promise, their average production was 41%. That's the average. Um, and I don't know about you, but when I went to school, 40% was, was an F. Um, so uh, what we're talking about here is different grades of failure. And what we have in mind for this idea is, is there some percentage below which folks should be ineligible for certain funding, uh, similar to what OBAG said. Now, what OBAG said is, if you have an approved housing element, you get the money. And when you think about it, that's a pretty low bar, right? Because an approved housing element is required by state law anyway. Um, this really, the idea I'm going to present to you, goes a step further than that. It says, going beyond the promises that state law requires you to make, how much have you actually produced? Next slide. Now again, as I said at the outset, our preference is, and we're still going to do this, uh, that we take this issue systematically, that we look at all the various fund sources that MTC either controls or doesn't. Uh, we talk about how all of those might play a role in the housing question, but because of the timetable that we're on, and I'm glad he's back. Uh, Bob Alvarado actually will be a decision maker in this process because he's a California Transportation Commissioner as well. And this particular fund source is the fourth one from the left called the State Transportation Improvement Program, or STIP. Obviously, you could see a couple of bars to the left of this chart are much larger than the STIP. And so this group should spend quite a bit of time talking about those. But the STIP is the fast-moving train right now. And MTC has to submit a program uh, for those funds to the State Transportation Commission by the end of this calendar year. So it's very quickly. And that particular opportunity will be about $300 million. So it's not a small amount of funding. The reason I'm here to talk to you about it today is if we miss this opportunity to have this discussion, we're going to wait two more years before we can have it again. Um, and so on the one hand, I, I felt poorly about bringing this to you at your first meeting. On the other hand, I felt poorly about you missing the opportunity even to talk about it at your first meeting. And by the time you're done, it still won't be time to talk about the next cycle. So uh, warts and all, we're here with the idea. And what you can see here, these are annual funding increments. As I said, uh, the, the funding opportunity for the STIP that is coming up uh, is round about $300 million for the Bay Area. Next slide. So I've got two questions for you. And obviously, I'm skipping a whole lot of detail. Um, and that detail will be something that the commission, and there are several commissioners who are here today, um, they will be digging into this in detail. But I think it would be valuable to hear from this leadership group about what you think about two ideas. And here again, I, I want to give you sort of a carrot and a stick. And people do tend to like carrots a lot better because, I mean, you can eat a carrot. Uh, a stick doesn't taste very good, and it doesn't feel very good to get hit with one either. Um, but what we have found with the OBAG program is that the combination of the two, an incentive and a disincentive, was more powerful than just the incentive all by itself. The incentive idea is the first question. You know, that challenge that I mentioned to you earlier, 80,000 units by 2020, well, what if we added some more money to that? and made that challenge more valuable? Would that encourage more behavior? And we might want to keep it not the top 10, but maybe the top 15. Lots of details, lots of ways to slice and dice. But the basic idea is 
should we increase our commitment to that pool of funds? And as it turns out, the State Transportation Improvement Program, the STIP, mon the money typically comes in county silos, and you sort of have to spend it in each county in the Bay Area. Bob's very familiar with this. But because of a unique set of circumstances, there is actually about 50 million bucks in the next STIP cycle that has MTC's name on it. It doesn't have an individual county's name on it. And so we really, our commission has the discretion to decide how to expend those funds. And our idea is that they continue to spend them on transportation. That's not the point. But that they be awarded based upon the housing production of the cities that do the best in the region, whether it's the top 10 or the top 15. That's the carrot. The stick at the bottom is the second question, and that is whether we should withhold funds from jurisdictions that are producing less than some kind of specified threshold uh, of their arena numbers for low, very low, and moderate income housing. You remember I mentioned that the average in the Bay Area the last two cycles is about 40%. So if we were to pursue this second idea, it wouldn't be at 40%. Certainly wouldn't be higher than 40%. It would be much lower, say at 10%, which would probably capture about 10 or so jurisdictions in the region based upon our preliminary analysis. But the policy question there is, is withholding money appropriate in the case of those jurisdictions that are producing so much less than even the regional average, which is so poor to begin with, uh, that some kind of it's disincentive to go with the incentive at the top should be considered. So I realize I've just hit you with a fire hose, um, and I again apologize for that, but I, I did think we owed it to this committee, since you are meeting and you're meeting while this opportunity is available, to give you a chance to weigh in on it. 